Today we're going to be creating some Drew-It-Yourself projects. Get it? Drew-It-Yourself projects? It's not DIY, it's Drew-It-Yourself. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and I'm really excited today because the other day I was back home with my parents and we decided to go to the Dollar Tree. There is a Dollar Tree right by our house in my hometown and I wanted to just pop in. I actually had no intentions on making a video. We were just going to go because my mom needed to get a couple of organizational items and I ended up actually finding so many good things that I was like, I have to make a Dollar Store video ASAP because the things I found are so good and I am just extremely excited for you guys to see today's video I think you are going to love the projects and I also found a couple of inspiration photos online where the original items were just so expensive and I created a more affordable version using the Dollar Tree items of course so if you've not already make sure to subscribe to my channel you can click the subscribe button below and also click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button just to be notified whenever I post brand new videos you're gonna get a quick little notification because who doesn't want to be notified quickly before jumping in don't forget to also head over and follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen for you guys. And if you would like your daily dose of Drew, because I don't know why you wouldn't, definitely follow me on I'm Drew Scott, where I post more of my lifestyle and fashion and just like my own personal stuff over there. So if you want to follow either, feel free to do so. And yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to see this video. I think it's a really good one. I was going to say it's one of my favorites, but I say that every video. So let's just like get into it. Alrighty guys, so jumping into project number one, we are recreating this Madison frame from Anthropology's website. I think it's so beautiful, but the price tag is $188, so we're going to recreate that at just a fraction of the price using some canvases and faux flowers from the dollar store. I'm also going to be using some gold paint, a wooden dowel, hot glue, scissors, and a paintbrush. So what I'm starting off by doing is taking the faux flowers off of the actual stems. You can just pull them off, and a majority of these were from the dollar store, but I did actually use a small bundle that I found at Michael's Craft Store. It it was on sale in the fall floral section for 70% off so it ended up only being like two dollars for the bundle so I kind of cheated a tiny bit here but it's still super super affordable so I figured that it was fine to use and then what I did was I brought a cardboard box outside and I laid my florals out just to give them a little bit of space in between I cut the leaves off of the actual like little sections they were on and then I used my gold spray paint to give them a nice coating of the gold kind of finish and basically what you have to do is go over every single flower and I do this probably about three times but but also guys do not worry if you cannot fully cover it in the gold because this is kind of just like a priming stage we're actually going to go in later and really cover them um, in the future so I gave them like three coats let them dry for about an hour and then I went back inside and started all my canvases so these are little canvases from the dollar store and I flipped them over and I'm actually going to be painting the back side I really loved the fact that these staples were exposed and I also love how the back side of the canvas kind of has a little bit more dimension than the front side so what I'm doing is using a gold finish paint just to go all the way around and I love the way that this makes it look like an actual piece of brass with like some actual like rivet staples on there got it on the table of course so I went around all my canvases painted them as so on the edges and on the top Once done with that, you can use a wooden dowel. I got this one at Michael's. I think it was like 80 cents, so uh, it worked out perfectly. And as you can see, this orange flower has so much of the orange showing. But what I did was I actually used my flowers and just created a cluster across this dowel, kind of to match that similar anthropology vibe the other one did have. And I just played around with this. I glued wherever I felt was necessary. I glued leaves in to fill in spots. I glued flowers on top of flowers. I really just filled in the section to make it look really full and very beautiful. And I flipped it over on the backside just to add a little additional glue to make sure that it was super super secure and once that's done this is where I'm telling you guys you can go back in and add the most because a lot of the sections aren't gonna actually be showing so flip it in a 360 direction and spray this thing to death like I swear you guys spray it give it the most spray paint and the more layers you give it the more of a brassy kind of metallic finish that the flowers actually get so next what I did was I laid out all of my golden frames along with that little flower section at the top and I flipped them over I kind of scattered them out to kind of give them a very random-esque look and then I used a little bit of black string tied a knot and hot glued it on the back of these canvases and keep in mind that these canvases are super super lightweight so you can really use like whatever string you don't need anything super industrial and hot glue would work perfect for this project so once they were all glued I also went ahead and I glued them to the top bar at the top so you're just gonna glue these up here just once done, you can use your scissors to snip off the extra. And then I also went in and used my brass paint just to paint the actual strings using a paper towel. And that really finishes off this project. The total only came out to $17, which is a fraction of the price of the $188 price tag. Oh. Thank you. 
so moving into project number two, we are gonna be using some wreath forms. You get a two pack for a dollar and we're also gonna be using some wire, wire cutters, white spray paint, gold paint, and a paintbrush. So this is artistic wire, as you can see by the title of it. Um, I got this at Michael's. It was originally $8 for the pack, but I used a 50% off coupon. So I got it for just $4 for the entire pack. And what I'm gonna start off by doing is actually taking the wire, wrapping it around the outermost section of the wreath form a couple of times. And then I actually worked in a couple foot sections. This is kind of similar to the weaving tutorial where you work in like eight foot sections at a time. But I think for the wire, I probably worked in about three foot sections at a time, just so that it didn't get tangled or anything like that. And this wire is super thin and very easy to move. So don't worry about that. It's just kind of like a stiffer string if you think about it. But this is gonna add so much texture to the outside. And basically what I did was I wrapped it around and then at some sections, I actually wrapped it in a loop around the center post. So I wrapped it around a couple of times as shown here. And then in some sections, I went in kind of like right here. I went in, I slid that wire underneath the middle section and then back up through to create a loop around the middle section, which just adds a little bit more texture to the frame. I like the way that it looks and this kind of gives it a very boho, handmade aesthetic, which I really like at the moment. So you're gonna basically just repeat this process around the entire frame until you reach the very end using your wire cutters. And then once you do reach that um, new section, just cut a new three foot strand and start working again. So you can kind of just piece together these sections as you go. Now it does kind of look like this may take a while, but honestly guys, it took me maybe 25 minutes max. I just listened to a couple songs and I was good. So this is a first paint job I did. I didn't like it, but I wanted to share it with you guys anyways. I used some masking tape and I was gonna create kind of a sunburst with some gold spray paint. So I sprayed that on there with the masking tape and then I removed it and I just did not like the way it looked. I think I would have liked it a bit more if the black posts were in there, uh, but I ended up going in with some white spray paint and just covering the entire thing and then using a little bit of that gold paint to just go around the edge and kind of do a little handwork on this. So I went around and just very tediously added some gold paint around the edge and also onto like the wires. And then I also did it to the center section as well. So in the end, I thought this frame looked super, super cute. Um, it ended up only costing $3 to create and I just printed a photo off and glued it on the inside and it was good to go. Had to save my favorite project for last. I am so obsessed with the outcome, guys. I think you are going to love this one, and I cannot believe I created it using these wind twisters from the dollar store. They look like this when you get them. They are rainbow. They are in your face, but we're going to tone them down just a little bit to create something similar to these brass sculptures I see at places like CB2 or Neiman Marcus. They're on the expensive side, so the other supplies I'm using are some gold spray paint, wooden block, marble contact paper, wooden dowel, hot glue, and a drill as well. And what I'm starting off by doing is basically gluing two of these wind twisters together in a very abstract form and then I'm using my wooden dowel to glue in the center section of this just to hold it upright so if you guys are working with things like this if you can find these at your Dollar Tree you can just basically kind of feel it out and see what feels correct on this so I'm gluing it to the wooden dowel as shown here I'm adding extra glue because wherever you add the extra glue we're gonna cover it with spray paint anyways so it kind of looks like a welded point which I think looks really nice and I'm also using one of the diamond shaped ones as a solo piece just because I wanted to create two options for you guys so I'm adding some extra glue to make sure it's super secure bringing it outside and giving it a good dosing or dousing I guess you could say I mean I guess I probably should have said dousing of gold spray paint so I'm flipping it over giving these multiple coats on each side because we need to cover up that rainbow um, it's not very aesthetic for the home so I'm covering it up and then my box had some little holes in it so I kind of put it in there and sprayed it really really nicely to make sure that everything was fully coated in that brass spray paint and then I got these little wooden blocks at Michaels these were 250 each well they were actually five dollars use a coupon 
250, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I use the marble contact paper, which I will link this one below. It's my favorite one. It's from Amazon. I featured it on my channel before, and I'm going to be covering this with some marble contact paper to add some visual interest to the box because you could spray paint it, which I actually did with one box, but I really wanted to give it that very sculpture-esque look, which I think a marble base looks really, really great. So I covered it. In some sections, you actually have to go in and just kind of press in the side, use an X-Acto knife to cut in a tiny bit as shown here, and then just cut all the way down to relieve the excess. It's kind of like wrapping a present in a sense. So once you do that, you can actually pull up that section, press it down really, really hard, and then pull that panel over and just really cover it nicely. Cut off the excess, and yeah, however you want to cover your block with your marble contact paper is completely up to you. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory if you see what I'm doing here. But um, yeah, I just went in, cut off the excess, and that's my little marble block. It turned out really, really beautiful. It actually looks like a piece of marble. Very happy with it. And then with one of my other blocks, I just used a matte black spray paint just to give it a nice coating because I felt like a black base was also very common in these sculptures. So once I was done with that, I went in with my drill and I just drilled down the center. These boxes are actually hollow. My head was in the way the whole way, which is just great, but I did it again right here. I drilled down the center point, drilled back up, and then all you have to do is bring this inside, add some hot glue to the base, add some hot glue to the whole section. I just piped a lot of it in there just to make sure it was super secure. Press it down inside, make sure that it meets the bottom section, it's standing up straight, and you are good to go, you guys. These sculptures turned out amazing, and they literally cost either five or six dollars, depending if you use one or two of the wind twisters. And I just absolutely love this project. Okay, guys, those projects, those were pretty good, right? Those were like pretty good, right? They were good. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. The Lone Fox family is growing so much, guys. We are at like 230,000 right now, which is crazy. We just hit 200K like a couple weeks ago. Thank you all so much for the love and support on these videos. And lastly, before letting you guys go, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for your daily dose of Drew and your daily dose of DIY at I'm Drew Scott and at Lone Fox Home. I'll put them on the screen for you guys to check out and I will catch Catch you all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys. <laughs>